Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I wanted to start off, before I get way too far in, letting you know that this uh, particular series in SDL for right now is targeted towards a Principles of Programming class, which comes before Object Oriented, so we will not be doing any classes or uh, any inheritance or anything from the Object Oriented realm. This is all just going to be linear coding, logic, and having fun with SDL. So now that that is out of the way, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you about timers and the SDL rect in order to make our image not span across the entire screen. So if you remember from last time, uh, if we rendered this, it renders the image across the entire screen. Now I'm going to make it into a small uh, rectangle, and I'm going to move it based on time. So those are two things that are important, uh, movement and time for any game. So we're going to start with uh, setting up the rectangles. So if we check out the last two arguments of this SDL render copy, we have a uh, source rect or screen rect, and we have a destination rect. So the first rectangle is supposed to be the size of our screen, or however large you want that. Normally the size of the screen is what it's going to be. And the second one is the actual rectangle that this image is going to be drawn within. So we're going to create two rectangles. I'm going to create one SDL underscore rect. I'm going to call it uh, window, or I'm going to call it screen rectangle equals, and this is a structure, so SDL rect is a struct, come on, pop up, there you go, it's a struct, and its arguments are x, y, width, and height in that order, so we're going to say 0, 0, screen width, and screen height, and we're going to create a second SDL rect, SDL underscore rect, and we'll call this uh, image rectangle, equals, uh, we'll put it at 0, 0, and have it at 100 and 100 for the width and height. So the width will be 100, height will be 100, and it'll start at 0, 0. So if I plug these in, if you notice, we these are pointers, so we're going to have to pass the reference of these rectangles. So I'm going to grab the uh, screen rect first, passed in the, the reference to that, and I'm going to grab the image rect next, and I'm going to pass in the reference to that. If I run this right now, you'll see that it's a small little 100 by 100 up there. Uh, in the top left corner. So uh, now that we have that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to do a timer. So the concept of a timer is we're actually going to be using the SDL tick um, or get ticks, which is going to just give us the, the ticks. So uh, basically what we need to do is get a start tick or a start time, and we need to constantly subtract that from the current ticks in order to get uh, the new ticks in between when we started and where we are. So we're going to go up here and we're going to create an uh, a uint32, so an unsigned integer of 32 bits. And we're going to do unsigned because we're not going to have negative time. So I'm going to call it start time. And I'm going to create a function prototype here, uh, uint32. Uh, time. It's just going to be a simple function to return the amount of time that it's been. I could call this elapsed time or game time or whatever. I'm just going to call it time for now. We'll change it later. So I'm going to create this, uh, I'm going to implement this function. So let's go down to the bottom here. And basically all we're doing is return SDL underscore get ticks subtracted by our start time. And the very last thing we have to do is actually set up our start time. So we're going to copy this right here, SDL get ticks. We'll go up to the top of our main. Uh, we could do it in initialize actually. So let's say down here at the end of the initialize, the start time will be equal to the current ticks. Now that we have that, we can actually use that in order to move this object. And you'll notice that ticks are not seconds, by the way. I should point that out. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make this rectangle, the image rectangle, move by time. So I'm going to say image rectangle dot x. So its x position is going to be equal to time. Let's run this. And you can see that it just took off. That was definitely is tons of pixels in between that. So what we're going to do is uh, we want it to, let's say, the screen width is, uh, I don't know, so some, what did we say it was, 720? 
yeah, 720. So 720. So if I took time and, or I took the screen width divided by time, uh, well, that's not what I wanted. The time divided by screen width, possibly. There we go. Yeah, that's moving really slow. Uh, so if we divide by anything, let's forget about screen width. If we divide by something like five, uh, it's going to slow down our movement. So you can see this isn't moving as fast as uh, when I didn't have it. So something we can do instead of dealing with division, we can do multiplication. So taking it down by a tenth. There we go. So uh, that's basically how you can manipulate movement. You can change, you can uh, scale it here uh, th this time in order to move it slower if you can scale it lower or uh, make it higher if you want to scale it higher. So uh, obviously we don't really want it to go too fast. Now, why do we want to use uh, ticks versus just saying, oh, X, uh, rather than just saying X plus equals one? If we say X plus equals one, this thing is going to fly off the screen. I don't even know if you saw that. It just flies off. Now, that's because my CPU is running pretty fast, and it's going to add all those ones up really fast and do all the rendering and shoot through it. So basically, uh, if we have different computers running it, and they all have different CPUs, some, some better, some worse, uh, it's going to be moving around slower on some machines versus others. And we can't have our game running slower on certain machines just because they have a different CPU. So by doing something with time, often we use delta time uh, for movement. We can actually normalize the speed of the, so of the processors between frames by getting the amount of time between frames and then using that for our speed or our movement or anything that's constantly adding in order for it to move at the same speed on all different kinds of computers. So if we were to use the time, like we're doing in this case, uh, this will be the same speed across everybody else's computer because it's time. So there you go. That's how you can move an image. Uh, so you can use the image rectangle and move it by that. And that is also how you can deal with time. So uh, in next videos, we're going to look at how we can start grouping these things together in a pseudo object oriented way. It's not object oriented. Uh, but we want to group things together because obviously keeping track of, let's say we have 50 enemies, keeping track of 50 rectangles is going to be completely annoying. Uh, so uh, there you go. That's a simple tutorial on moving by time and what time is and anything like that. And you can use this timer for, for countdowns or anything if you want to print out the time or anything like that. You can do that as well. Um, if you really wanted to, you can also see what the time is. So if I say u int 32 uh, temp equals time, and then I just put a breakpoint, I just put a breakpoint right here on the line below it, and then I run that. And we have over temp, it's going to be 4. If I press F5 to continue and make it come all the way back around, it's going to be at 5,130. So these ticks are in milliseconds. So let's see what we're at now. 12, uh, we're at 13, 14, 15, 16, add a couple seconds, and 18. So uh, these ticks are in milliseconds, which is fantastic. I love milliseconds uh, because that allows us to be extremely precise. So... Uh, if you wanted to, just to throw out some extra stuff, if you wanted to work not in milliseconds but in seconds, uh, what you can do is you can take this time and divide it by a thousand. And of course, uh, you can store this. Oh, geez, what happened there? Store this into like a float uh, time. And then if we put a breakpoint here and run it. We'll have our time at that, and if we run it, you'll see that it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, almost six, seven. So then we can use uh, that uh, the float as an a uh, 
as seconds. And you'll see that a lot in certain game engines. Like if you work with Unity, uh, you'll see that they use time in, as a float as seconds. So uh, that's time. And uh, this is, uh, that's how you use ticks and how you can get movement happening on these images. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.